Executive Committee of Chengdu Craft Biennale 2021. I'm very pleased to have you with us. This is uh, 2021 Chengdu Craft Biennale's uh, third academic uh, event. Through this event, we intend to take a deeper look at the theme of tool for conviviality. We're going to have presentation and discussion so that we can create synergy effect between the exhibition and academic endeavor and create new craft discourse. The program consists of three different sessions where a presentation will be given and discussants will engage in panelist discussion. So three sessions are under the themes of ex respectively uh, conviviality caring, craft value sharing, and craft cities regeneration. We will have eight different uh, presenters from home and abroad. Uh, all the talks and discussions uh, will be pre-recorded. And for three days between 28th to 30th of September, the videos will be released on Chengju Craft Biennale's website and our YouTube channel. In this session, we will grapple with the topic of Japanese tableware for the eyes and hands. How is a rich tabletop landscape created? The departing from a fundamental or basic functionality uh, as a container for food, we will look into tableware as a craft that satisfied visual and tactile uh, needs and satisfaction of the users. Uh, we will have a presentation made by our, speak our speaker, and we will have a one-on-one -on -one discussion between the speaker who is connected on Zoom and the panelists who are present here. So we will be able to look into the topic in a variety of perspective. Now let me introduce our presenter and the panelist for today's topic, a Japanese tableware for the eyes and the hands. How is a rich tabletop landscape created? Uh, our speaker today is Kazuko Todate, uh, Professor Kazuko Todate of, Toda, of, uh, of Tama Art University. Uh, she is renowned uh, art critic uh, who is very active in her research in history of craft and history of ceramics and craft theories. She served as a chief curator for Ibaraki Prefecture Ceramic Museum. Uh, he served as a judge for many different competitions, and she is also a prolific author of papers and articles. Nice to have you uh, with us, ma'am. And uh, we, let me introduce our panelist. Uh, pr president Chi Hae Kim is the uh, president of the Korean Association of Arts and Design, and she is also assistant professor at Ihua Women's University uh, Ceramic Art College. And she is also uh, chairman and editor at uh, Ceramic Art Research Institute of the same university. Now we will give the floor to Professor Todate for her talk on the topic of Japanese tableware for the eyes and hands. So in our day-to-day -day lives, we interact with tableware all the time, and we draw different craft value out of those uh, ceramics. So we will be able to have a renewed perspective on tabletop uh, wear. Uh, so we will now listen to the talk. Please go ahead, ma'am. Hello, everyone. My name is Kazuko Todate. Thank you for introducing me. Um, I'm so happy to be here at this colloquium. Um, this time, the Biennale Secretariat has given me the major theme of life, the aesthetics of everyday life. As a more specific theme, I have set Japanese tableware for the eyes and hands. How is a rich tabletop landscape created? Here, I will discuss the fascinating diversity of Japanese tableware from two perspectives. One is from the perspective of the end user and the appearance of tableware. 
And the other is from the maker and the production style of the tableware. Japanese tableware is of course closely connected to Japanese food culture. In 2013, Japanese food was registered as an intangible cultural heritage by UNESCO. Here's a question for you. What kind of Japanese food do you like? Sushi? or tempura, I eat both, but I prefer tempura to sushi. How about you? Japanese food as an intangible cultural heritage, however, does not refer to specific dishes such as sushi or tempura. Intangible cultural heritage is a formless culture. Japanese food as intangible cultural heritage means the traditional food culture of the Japanese people. Japanese tableware has supported Japanese cuisine. So what are the characteristics of Japanese tableware in terms of appearance. The first, diversity. The first characteristic is diversity. This is an example of typical breakfast for one person. It's gorgeous, isn't it? You can try something like it if you stay in a traditional Japanese ryokan, or if you choose to have a Japanese breakfast, even in a Western style hotel in Japan. Uh, look, rice and miso soup are served in lacquered wooden bowls and the egg omelet and the center is served in a small ceramic bowl with a brush pattern. A grilled fish, salmon, you can see it, is in a square porcelain dish with a blue and white pattern. Pickers here, uh, served in a square dish uh, divided into two parts. A savory egg custard is in a covered bowl of porcelain with a colored pattern. Tea here. Tea is served in a tall porcelain teacup, and so on. The height, shape, color, and pattern of the dishes are all different, creating a varied scene on the dining table. In addition, the cutlery is also diverse including uh, wooden chopsticks, a lacquered spoon, and a porcelain spoon. And here, a small wooden skewer for dessert that is a Japanese sweet like warabi mochi. It's tasty. Let's compare it to a Western style breakfast. 
Of course, this also looks delicious. Compared to Japanese dishes, Western style dishes are generally flatter and have more white areas, giving them a more uniform look. Roughly speaking, the whole image of the Western dishes is whitish and clean. Back to Japanese breakfast. The most important characteristic of Japanese tableware is its diversity. Japanese tableware is made of ceramic and non-ceramic materials, including wood, lacquer, and glass. So the color, shape, and texture of each individual item of Japanese tableware has a completely distinct feel to it. A variety of different dishes are gathered together for a single meal on the same table. Japanese people enjoy the combination of different types of tableware, rather than focusing on unity like a set of Western tableware. The second, the second characteristic is enjoying the four seasons. There are four seasons in Japan, as you know, spring, summer, fall and winter. Japanese people choose vessels according to each season. For example, when drinking Japanese sake, ceramic sake cups are used in winter, whereas glass cups like these are used in summer for a cooler atmosphere. The glassware in the picture on the screen is by the Japanese gloss artist Yosuke Otsuki, uh, young artist. Uh, these cups are made with his um, glass blowing and cutting techniques. The third. The third characteristic is enjoying tableware, not only visually, but also tactilely. I think this is unique to Japan. Japanese people hold almost all bowls with their hands and eat, including rice bowls and miso soup bowls many dishes. When you eat, you not only enjoy the sight of the dishes, but also enjoy the sense of touch. The sake cup on the left is made by Jun Isezaki, and the other one on the right is made by Masatoshi Sakaegi. The smoothness, roughness, lightness, and the heaviness, a little heaviness of the bowls and cups are a part of the enjoyment of eating. From the viewpoint of the creator, they also create tableware with an emphasis of texture and touch. The fourth. 
The fourth characteristic is the pleasure comes both before and after eating. Japanese plates can be enjoyed twice in one meal. In Western plates, the center of the plate is left white and the pattern is placed on the edge of the plate. On the other hand, in Japanese plates, the center of the plate is also painted. Before eating, the picture on the, on the plate is not visible, but after you finish eating, for example, a painted shrimp appears. There's a blue shrimp under the real salmon. The shrimp is one of the auspicious motifs in Japan. You can appreciate it after eating. Very cute. Next, let's consider the reasons for the diversity of tableware from the maker's side or making side. The reason for diversity of Japanese vessels also comes from the fact that Japanese tableware is made in a variety of production styles. There are five production styles of tableware in Japan. And what are these five types? There are at least five production styles in Japan. Type one, made by designer and factory for mass production. Type two, made by studio craftsmen under the guidance of a potter for a medium volume production. Type three, made by an individual potter alone for a small lot production. Type four, made by an individual ceramic artist without considering mass production. Finally, type five, made by artisans. In other words, folk art. Let's take a look at the examples in order. Type one, made by designer and factory. So-called product design. It is suitable for mass production. The prices are reasonable. The designer creates the design and the craftsmen in the factory replicate this using a mold. For example, a ceramic designer Masahiro Mori, uh, who is very famous in Japan, a uh, pioneer of product design. Soy sauce pictures above and the white cups below. Uh, they are simple, cool, and easy to use. The white cups named fancy cup by the artist. They are also a universal design. The person holding 
this cup will not drop it even if the grip is weak. This is because those cups are shaped unevenly like this. Mass productive cups are for everyone, including the elderly people and disabled people. However, at first glance, these cups have a very unique and nice form, which does not remind us of disabilities. It's only when you use them that you realize that they are easy to grip, hard to drop. I think that is what ideal universal design is all about. Type two, made by studio craftsmen under the guidance of a potter. It is suitable for medium volume production. The price is a little higher than type one. A potter makes a sample and several staff members in the potter's studio make multiple copies under the guidance of the potter. For example, these uh, Yusuke Aida marbled tableware, which requires a little higher technique. Um, the striped pattern was not painted. It is the color of the clay itself. To make these cups, brown clay and white clay, uh, sloughs are stacked alternately and the lumps, lumps are sliced to make striped clay slabs. Then the striped clay slabs are used for shaping. This high technique can be used under the guidance of a potter. Type three, made by an individual potter alone. It is suitable for a small lot production. The potter creates his own design and makes several pieces by himself. For example, Go Sato, uh, his relatively simple and easy to use tableware, these vessels. Many of them are stackable, like these photos, like this, like this, very easy to stack. The small plates in the bottom photo are named abacus, according to the artist. When stacked side by side, they look like finally an abacus. The abacus is an old Japanese calculator, accounting tool, you know, but 
very stackable. Type four, artistic functional pieces made by an individual ceramic artist without considering mass production. I think the PC prices is the most expensive of the five types. Japanese ceramic artists often make some small sake cups, but they make them one by one, just like their ceramic art pieces. It is a functional item, but it is also a work of art. And end users appreciate the sake cup itself as much as they enjoy drinking. Sake cups and um, matcha tea bowls for tea ceremony symbolize the Japanese attitude of enjoying practical utensils, both visually and tactily. They are also more expensive than other everyday dishes. For example, um, sake cup uh, by Jun Isezaki, a living national treasure, and the other one by Masahiro Maeda. Here's a question for you. How much do you think these are? The cup on the right by Maeda Masahiro cost uh, 50,000 yen, Japanese yen, roughly $450 in the US or mm, 530,000 Korean won, maybe. In spite of a small cup, about five centimeters high and five centimeters in diameter. The other one on the left is a bit more expensive because it is made by a living national treasure of Japan, Jun Isezaki. You may think that these prices are too expensive. In Japan, however, the prices are acceptable. This is because they are like a piece of art, a kind of part, a kind of art pieces. Finally, type five made by artisans. In other words, folk art. It means old fashioned handmade products. Um, the price is not so expensive. Uh, it might be about the same as type one. Artisans reproduce what has always been made in their respective regions for a long time. They do not have personal characteristics, but regional characteristics.
everything from type one to type five can be mixed on a single table in Japan. In addition, creators of type one through five may be involved in more than one of these types. For example, a maker who is usually type four will rarely play the role of the type one designer. In, a, in another example, some potters work with both fourth type four and type two. And they use different signature, different um, uh, autograph mark for each. The potter, Yusuke Aida, I mentioned before, is known as a type two, type two potter in Japan. Though he used to be a chief designer at Bennington Potter's company. He did a designer. He was chief designer. Uh, Bennington Potter's company is a well-known ceramic company in America. What I have told you so far is the reason why the Japanese dining landscape is so rich. Conclusion. Japanese tableware is not just a functional container but an object to be enjoyed with the eyes and hands. In Japan, both the end user and the maker enjoy the differences in each dish like this. Therefore, it is better to have each dish different than to have a unified one. In order to create these differences, there are many different makers with different personalities and various production styles, such as five different types that I have mentioned so far. That's why the Japanese tabletop landscape is so rich and varied. I think if you were to combine and arrange dishes of many countries, you would probably create a very happy dining scene. It's just like the Olympics tableware. The culture of tableware and the diversity of tableware are built by the creator and the user together. Oh, finally, I would like to add one more thing. Sake cups were mentioned many times in my presentation, but I'm not a heavy sake drinker. That's all for my presentation. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you. Yes, thank you, uh, Professor Tadekatsuko, for the presentation. The uh, tableware has strong connection to the dietary habit or lifestyle of the country. So. Under this um, statement, uh, we can 
learn from the perspective of user and maker how Japanese tableware uh, started to bear diversity and richness. So I, I believe the audience now have a deeper understanding into the two perspectives from a user and a producer. So we will now um, have the one-on-one -on -one discussion between Professor Tudate and with Professor Kim Jihye. Yes, good evening, Professor. First of all, I would like to uh, thank you for the very interesting presentation. So it was my first time uh, listening to your talk, and um, your uh, last comment reminded me of that a lot of different sake cups I will be introduced to you in your future <laughs> presentation. So I will now uh, start my discussion. So you identify as a key characteristic of Japanese tableware as a diversity. Uh, you introduce uh, perspectives from a user and a maker for us. So originality of a maker and the usage of a user come together uh, to create a basic value of this craft. Uh, and then I think this is most desirable direction of craft, and I believe uh, this is already in action in the Japanese craft sector. So particularly, um, your tea ceremony and sake enjoyment uh, is one of the key uh, culture uh, that you have that uh, gains envy of many different uh, craft sector. Uh, and it is quite impressive that uh, many different production styles are taken in Japan. And we do have young artists who are also uh, experimenting with different uh, production style. So my question is, um, the cultural aspect and the lifestyle are changing all the time. And I believe around the world, also in Japan, our dietary habit or lifestyles are changing. So many are um, replacing their traditional breakfast with just a bread or cereal. And in Korea, uh, the home meal replacement has become really, really popular. And my, myself, I myself is a bad cook, and I don't cook that well. So I usually go for something really simple. So in line with this change in uh, lifestyle or dietary habit, how are Japanese tableware changing? Uh, so from a traditional uh, Japanese table, uh, where to what direction are you seeing the movement? Thank you. Um, um, <laughs> um, yes, uh, actually, I love kimchi <laughs> and I love Korean dishes. So um, actually, I have a uh, cereal uh, sometimes for breakfast, but I eat cereal uh, with lacquered wooden balls uh, one day or mm, ceramic bowl in another day. Um, sometimes, uh, change uh, the bowls and enjoy uh, many kinds of bowl even now in Japan. Um, and uh, in this age, mm, um, ecological, ecology and SDGs, um, sustainable um, uh, development goals is very important now. So uh, I recommend uh, uh, to use uh, sustainable bowls like ceramic or lacquered, of course, uh, metal or other materials to my 
university students. Um, uh, we enjoy the many countries dishes, but um, Mm. Uh, for example, pasta. Uh, um, you can enjoy the pasta uh, on the Western style plate or um, Japanese style bowls or any kinds of dishes. Um, made by foreign countries. Uh, diversities of uh, cuisine. Um, it's possible for diversity of tableware. Every all people in all over the world can enjoy the all kind of dishes made by all countries. Um, I hope the diversity of the tableware and the diversity of cuisine <laughs> I expand all to all over the world. So you can enjoy. Uh, uh, please try some dish dishes you find um, good look, good looking dishes. So please, <laughs> not answer. <laughs> please try. Yes, uh, the discussion or the conversation is quite practical. Uh, we are talking about um, different cuisine, uh, food dishes, and uh, dietary lifestyle because the uh, tableware is something that we use every day. So that's why uh, we are taking this uh, direction in the conversation. So I fully understand your answer. And I myself am curious as to know uh, that first question is, um, so we you talked about five different uh, production styles uh, of uh, Chinese ceramic makers. Uh, so I was wondering, why uh, did you uh, categorize these five specific uh, styles? As well, I was pondering upon this, maybe in Japan, uh, something traditional and something modern were pursued uh, concurrently in their uh, in your craft uh, sector and craftsmanship doesn't just stop at creating something the basis for enjoyment and usage are quite expansive so quite large user user base is there for uh, craft objects. So uh, that's why I understood uh, why you have five different styles explained to us. So I want to clarify if my understanding is correct. And the second question is, so from a user's perspective, in the ordinary consumers, uh, these five different styles, uh, would they um, would they consider this an important aspect in their buying purchasing uh, decision? So for example, if I decide to buy this sake uh, cup, would it uh, because of the beauty of sake cup or because of the aesthetics of design or also because of the um, production style of the sake cup? Is that an important element in the purchase decision? Uh, why I categorize five types? 
Hmm. Um, I think uh, five five types production styles. Uh, uh, um, produce uh, many kinds of um, tableware. And in Japan, um, uh, many potters uh, make tableware as um, um, his um, his really job. Uh, he makes a uh, tableware and get money. Um, there are many that kind of uh, um, a, uh, a kind of professional potters in Japan. And also, um, how to say, artistic uh, ceramic uh, artist also in Japan. Um, in addition, of course, there are designer. Uh, I think uh, five kinds of uh, creator in Japan. That's important for diversity of tableware. And there are many ways, at least five ways to make uh, tableware. Uh, maker, a um, uh, potter or ceramic artist uh, can choose the way of production styles. So, um, five types tableware is, has been made for a long history in Japan and now continued to um, be here in Japan. Then maker um, choose any of uh, five types. Uh, uh, depends on uh, his uh, situation or condition. It's um, very convenient and flexible. Yeah. Hi. Yes. Yes. Yes, I can um, uh, really agree that your view, yes, uh, that's also included in my question uh, because there is harmony between what's traditional and what's modern uh, because that strong combination uh, of tradition and modernity led to five different uh, styles of production. Yes, so I wanted to clarify that understanding and with your uh, explanation, uh, I have uh, even clearer understanding. Thank you for that. And we do not have a lot of time. Um, so in Japanese uh, tradition of food and tableware, so 
I also asked what is important in the selection made by users. So would you please uh, answer the second question? So it, the selection uh, by user. Yes. Um, the, uh, the five types uh, useful for user. Uh, users sometimes choose very um, artistic pieces or sometimes choose very simple designed pieces. And uh, user uh, combined the artistic piece and the mm, simple and uh, cool pieces. The, uh, the five types of creative situation for users on the tabletop. Yes, uh, I'm in full agreement. Uh, it brings uh, richness to the table uh, and adds creativity. Uh, yes, I uh, understand the zest of your answer. So we talked about uh, Japanese tableware and the richness and diversity uh, of Japanese tableware. So, and through this discussion, we also shed light on uh, how uh, different dietary lifestyle and food uh, habits are influencing that. And so uh, in the interest of time, I think we have to conclude uh, this session here. So we've listened to a presentation on the topic of Japanese tableware for the eyes and hands. And we also have a very vibrant discussion. And I uh, believe the audience had a deeper uh, understanding as well. I want to thank uh, Professor Tadate Katsuko and Professor Kim Jie for your contribution. And we will conclude uh, this session here. So thank you very much. Uh,